Don't throw away the altar where mother used to pray. For there's where I found Jesus and he took my sins away. You say that it's not needed that it's only in the way if it's good enough for heaven it's good enough today by prayer the church was founded it's a place where we should pray if we teach our children how will they know the way let's gather around the altar and pray to God each day and let the Holy Spirit guide us on our And he took my sins away. Yeah. If it's good enough for heaven, it's good enough today. Our fathers read the Bible and had a family prayer. We'd gather round the altar and pray to Jesus there. They were led away from bondage and craved a stormy sea, a prayer around the altar brings peace and victory. Don't throw away the altar where mother used to pray. Yeah, for there's where and he took my sins away you say that it's not needed that it's only in the way if it's good enough for heaven it's good enough to Praise God. Praise God. My, my, my. Well, praise the Lord. We're glad and thankful to come back and share with you today the love of God in Christ Jesus. I'm so glad and so thankful that God is still God yet today. That he still calls people and says, come unto me. I'll give you rest. There is no rest in this old world. None whatsoever. Why? He says the world is like the waves of the sea. They're always kicking up the mar and the filth from the bottom of the ocean. Well, and so you see, but Jesus said, come to me. Depend on me. Look to me. I'm the one that's able to help you. I can give you rest. Rest, and we need some rest in this old world in which we live. It's not easy to come by. And so I'm praising God today for his mercy and for his grace 
just want to lift up the name of Jesus before a lost and a dying world. A world that is starved to death for spiritual food. But you know, I heard a preacher preach one time, and he took for a text, the sheep won't eat. The sheep won't eat. And you see, that's the problem. Why? Because the shepherd tries to feed the sheep, but the sheep don't want what he's got to feed them. They want something else. They're looking for something else. They're looking for the pleasures of this old world. They're looking for the things that, that they can look at with their eyes and say, that's mine. I like that. <laughs> but you see, the apostle Paul says, we're going to a city. A city. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And so today, you see, if you don't know this man called Jesus, you're missing something. You're missing something. You're missing a whole lot because Jesus wants to feed you. He wants to feed you. He wants you to come to him. You know, it's amazing how that in the East, in the Middle East, in Israel, there was a lot of shepherds. That was one of the lowliest jobs that there were, was being a shepherd. But there was a lot of shepherds. And they tried to take care of their sheep. They, would, they had them all named. And whenever evening time come, they'd bring them all in and they'd put them in one pen. All of the different sheep, they'd put them in one pen. And the next morning when the shepherds started getting up, they'd go to the gate and they would stand there and they would call their sheep by name. And as they called their sheep by name, they come through the gate. You see, a lot of times Jesus has called your name and you said, no, I don't want to come. I, I might lose too much. I, I, I won't have any fun if I get saved. Them people that's going to church, that they're prisoners. I'm free. I don't have to worry. Well, you see, I don't have to go to church. I get to. I don't have to sing. I get to. I don't have to preach. I get to. Well, praise God. Praise God. I don't have to praise the Lord, but I get to. I don't have to lift my hands up in the air, but I get to. I don't have to shout, but I get to. And so you see, that's all the difference in the world. I'm free. And I like that old song, Once like a bird in prison I dwell. No freedom for my sorrows I felt. But Jesus came and he listened to me. Glory to God, he set me free. Set me free. I've been free for a long time. A lot of people didn't believe that I'd ever stay free. They figured I'd be back in prison in just a little while. Not actual prison, but in a prison of sin. <coughs> in a prison of sin. When you're in sin, you're, you're in a prison. Why? Because you're never free. You're never free. But when you get saved, then you get set free. Just like that bird, you see. Jesus will set us free, free from the cares of this world, free from a lot of things that holds us down and holds us back, free from a lot of sickness and sorrow, free. Why? Because when you live for God, now, I've been sick a few times, but not very bad, not very much since I've got saved. Oh, I've had a lot of heartache and a lot of sorrow. I bet, honey, not near as much as what it could have been. Not near as much as what it could have been. I'm glad that I served Jesus. I'm glad one day Jesus passed by. And he looked at me and he says, come and follow me. So I've been following Jesus. One of these days, I'm going to leave this whole world. Why? Because he said he's coming back. Yes, 
He was crucified on an old rugged cross. Yes, they took him out and they placed him in a tomb. But he had already told them in three days, I'm going to come out of the ground. I'm going to be raised up. I'm going to be resurrected. Of course, the world didn't believe him. But those people that put him in the grave believed him. How do I know that? Because they put a guard in front of the tomb to make sure that he didn't come out of there. And nobody stole his body. But on the third day when they went looking for him, said the angel descended and rolled the stone away. And those guards just sat there like they were sound asleep. Never even woke up. And the angel rolled the stone away. How come Jesus wasn't there? How come he done it? He done that so we could go in and see that Jesus was gone. He was gone. Praise God. Praise God. And they sing an old song today. There's something going on at the graveyard. If I'm still living when Jesus comes, and I, I kind of believe we will, I believe I'll still be alive when he comes back after the church. I'd like to be standing right at my head, my mommy's headstone whenever she comes up. And meet her going up in the air. Well, you see, why? Because there's going to be something going on. He said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so you see, we're all going to go together. If you're ready. If you're ready. If you're not ready, there'll be a lot of weeping, a lot of crying. A lot of people saying, I wonder how them people knew what was going to happen. It's because these people read the Bible. And it's true. Every word of it is true. From the front, front, all the way to the back. All the way to the back. It's free. It's true. Well, Jesus is the healer. And he's still in the healing business today. And he says, you have not because you ask not. And whenever you ask, you ask amiss. You don't really believe it's going to happen, even though you forced yourself to ask. You don't really believe that it's going to happen. And he knows you, you see. He looks at the heart. That's where the faith that comes from. It comes from our heart, not from our head. The devil works on your mind. Jesus works in your heart. Well, praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you again today for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Father, for these uh, that sacrifices their time and comes uh, and sings these old songs of Zion. And I pray, God, that we'll use that old altar, that we'll not throw it out, we'll not tear it down, but we'll use that old altar. Because, Father, at an old altar like that was where I rendered my heart uh, uh, out to Jesus and I thank you that you cleaned me up and you cleaned me out and uh, you set me on a holy highway. And I pray, God, today uh, that we'll try to share that with others. Now, Father, have your way in our hearts. Bless the service tonight. Uh, use it, God, for your glory. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. All right, Brother Ron's going to come to sing for us. Do you pray for him? Life has been so good. I can't complain. Think about it. When I'm down, God yeah. gives me strength to rise again. But I'm weary from the struggle of it all. So I listen, how I listen for his call. Heaven sounds sweeter yeah. all the time. Seems like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven sounds sweeter all the time. 
Oh, it's hard to lose a loved one to the grave. But we have the blessed hope that Jesus gave. God's gonna wipe all the tears from our eyes. When we meet in that land beyond the sky, heaven sound is sweeter all the time. Yes, it does. Seem like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven. Sally sweeter all the time. You may have a brand new car, brand new house that shines and fall. You may live to be a hundred years old. But if you have not been saved, it all ends with the grave. But I want us to be together in heaven. I want us to be together in heaven. I want to walk down the streets of pure gold. I want to run through the fields of green clover. See the mansion, smell the flyer, hear the singing, it's so hard. See the river of life flowing. Feel the gentle breeze blowing. I want us to be together in heaven. <laughs> you may be some millionaire wearing clothes beyond compare. You may have the best that money can buy. But if the blood is not applied, then in hell you lift your eyes. But I want us to be together in heaven. I want us to be together in heaven. I want to walk down the streets of your gold. I want to run through the fields of green clover. See the mansion. Smell the flowers, hear the singing, it's so hard. See the river of life flowing, feel the gentle breezes blowing. I want us to be together in heaven. Well, well praise God. Nancy, don't you have another song? We're not going to leave it you to just one. <laughs> If you got a good horse, you got to work them. <laughs> <laughs> That's an A too. That's an A also. Yeah. Give me your hand. Let's agree to gather that all our our enemies will crumble at our feet. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we shall not be defeated. For in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. For many years now, Satan's tried to stop us. But the church of Jesus is still alive. And like a mighty army, we keep marching onward. And in 
in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. The Satan rages. We shall not be defeated. For in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. Praise God. You think about it. In the name of Jesus, Jesus has the power. And you know, as I look into my scripture, I see a verse of scripture that says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about healing all that was sick and all that was oppressed of the devil. You see, that's the way that God wants you and I to go. If I can find it real quick, I'll read you one more verse of scripture. And it's in the gospel of Mark. Chapter 16. And it's. The last four or five. Verses. Somebody moved it. And so you said, that's what happens to me sometimes. I'm not nervous, I'm just quick. You listen to this. So after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. He sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. So you see, Jesus didn't leave us powerless or helpless. He gave us that same power that God anointed him with, that to use for the glory of God, that we could be a witness and that people could not resist. What do you mean? How many times have you talked with people uh, am I, and they'd sit there and tears would run down their face? Uh, but they would look at you and say, no, I don't want to get saved today. But you see, it's not God's fault and if they go out of this world unprepared to meet God. And there's a lot of times when people go out of this world, then some of their friends or their relatives will grumble and complain and says, well, why did God take them? They wasn't ready to leave. You see, but the Bible teaches us that it's appointed unto man one time to die and then the judgment. That's the reason why that he says, whosoever will, let them come unto me. Let them come. You see, he said, it's not my will that any should perish. God don't want you to go into hell. God don't want you to go out of this world unprepared to meet him. But I would adventure to say that 90% or more, probably more than that, of people that pass away is not ready to go. They're not ready to leave. And whenever it comes right down to it, they don't want to. But you see, whether we want to or not, it's already said that it's appointed Unto man, one time to die. And so we know that it's coming. And I realize there's a lot of people that they'll look at you and they'll say, well, now listen, I, I believe 
that whenever, I, whenever my time has come, God's going to let me know and I'll have time to repent. No. What if you're flying up 10,000 feet or higher in the air on an airplane when it comes your time? Uh, you see, will you have time? How long will it take you? I've seen people that whenever they go to the altar and pray, they may pray for an hour before they finally surrender everything to God. You see, that's what God waits for. God waits for you to surrender to Him, not, not Him to you. God's not coming your way. You've got to go God's way. And his way is by the way of the cross. Let me say this. The cross of Jesus Christ is the only thing that, that stands between man and eternal hell. The cross of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that is what it takes. He says to come. If you want to follow me, come. Take up your cross and deny yourself and follow after me. What do you mean deny yourself? De deny your ability, your education, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, your self-will, uh, whatever it is that you rely on. God says, I want you to not to rely on that, but I want you to rely on me. And whenever I tell you uh, that you're saved, I've forgiven you, then you can stand on that because I have forgiven you. I've seen some pretty rough characters uh, uh, come to Jesus. Jesus. Uh, I've seen him come to the church drunk. I uh, might stagger all the way up to the altar trying to walk straight. Uh, and whenever they got up off of their knees, uh, honey, they was as sober uh, as if they hadn't had nothing to drink for three years. Uh, they, but that's how sober they was. Uh, and so you see, God knows how to sober you. God knows how to deliver you. I've seen people delivered from all, the, all different kinds of drugs. Uh, my. Uh, and so you see, he is a deliverer. He, that's the reason how uh, that we read in the Old Testament, you see, how God delivered uh, about three, four million Jews uh, out of the land of Egypt, and he took them all the way to the land of promise, uh, and God delivered them. And we think that he can't deliver us out of sin. Oh, yes, he can. We serve a mighty God. We serve a big God. Uh, and God is able uh, to perform all kinds of miracles uh, uh, I read in your hearing, he said how uh, that God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power and he went by about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil, all that was sick. You can just look over in the book of Matthew and you find there real quick, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, there was a leper that came uh, uh, looking for Jesus and uh, he cried out before he ever got to him uh, and he said, Lord, uh, if you will... You can heal me. That's right. That's what the leper says. Lord, if you will, you can heal me. And it says that Jesus stretched out and touched him and said, I will. I'm my, my. Uh, you see, God doesn't change. My Bible says Jesus Christ uh, uh, the same yesterday and today and forever. You see, leprosy uh, is a type of sin. Uh, that's what it speaks of, uh, a type of sin. And so you see, if God, if Jesus was able to heal a leper, uh, then Jesus is able to deliver you uh, from sin, uh, from your heartaches and your sorrows, uh, my, uh, the things that hold you down and hold you back. Uh, but there's one thing. He said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Uh, you see, the problem is sin uh, that holds us down. Uh, and my, uh, that's what's wrong with the church today. Uh, my, uh, there's so many people that's not living where God wants them to live. If they was, uh, we'd see them shouting. Why? Uh, because sin 
is heavy. It holds you down and you'll never be able to get up. Uh, my, my, I told my son one time, he, uh, we passed a school bus uh, uh, that the door was open on it. He said, uh, probably somebody was in there and stole everything was there. I said, well, the only thing that's there is a pole axe. Uh, and if they, sold, if they stole that, uh, my, uh, and if they ever try to shout, they'll find out the devil will hold that pole axe right over the top of their head. And every time they jump up, uh, uh, they'll hit that thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Touch those under the sound of our voice. I heal, set free, and deliver. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you is our prayer until this time next week.